For book one, proposition number 48 of Euclid's Elements, if in a triangle the square on one of the sides be equal to the squares on the remaining two sides of the triangle, the angle contained by the remaining two sides of the triangle is right. So this proposition is essentially the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So basically what we know is that if we drew squares on the side AC, AB, and BC, that the square on this side plus the square on this side would equal the square on this side. And our goal is to prove that if we know this is true, then the triangle has a right angle in it. So to prove this, let's first start by constructing a line, which we can call AD, that's perpendicular to the line AC. And we can do this because of book one, proposition number 11. But let's also make it so that AD is equal to AB, which we can do because of book one, proposition number three. So let's draw that line. And we can label this point here D. So this line here is equal to this line here. And now let's connect the points D and C. And we can do that because of postulate number one. So let's focus now on this triangle CAD. And since we constructed the line AD perpendicular to the line AC, we know that this angle here is right. And since we have a triangle with a right angle in it, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is book one, proposition number 47. So in other words, the square on the side AC, so let's write this, the square on AC plus the square on AD would be equal to the square on the hypotenuse, which is DC. And it should be mentioned that since AD and AB are equal to each other, that means the square on AD would equal the square on AB. So we can essentially make this substitution here for in this equation, the square on AC plus the square on AD equals the square on DC. But we know that the square on AD is equal to the square on AB. So let's rewrite this. And we can do this because of common notion number one. So we have that the square on AC plus the square on AB is equal to the square on DC. But the square on AC plus the square on AB, notice up here, is equal to the square on BC. So we can again use this common notion number one. And basically, this side here is equal to the square on BC. So that means the square on BC would be the square on DC. And if their squares are equal, that means that they have equal side lengths. Or in other words, the side BC equals the side DC. So now if we look at our triangles, we know AD and AB are equal. And we just showed that CD and CB are equal. But they also share this third side in common, AC. So we can use book one, proposition number eight, which is essentially the side, side, side theorem for triangles. So let's write that triangle CAB is equal to triangle CDA. Or in other words, these two triangles, this one here and this one here, these are equal to each other. And if the two triangles are equal to each other, that means that the angles within the triangles are equal as well. So this angle CAD would be equal to the angle CAB. So let's write that, that angle DAC would be equal to angle CAB. But we already know that angle DAC is a right angle. So that means that angle CAB would also be a right angle. So we've just proven that this angle CAB is a right angle. And remember, the entire goal of this proposition was to start with the fact that the square on each of these sides 
next to the right angle is equal to the square on the side opposite the right angle, also known as the hypotenuse, then our goal was to prove that this angle here was a right angle. And since we've done that, we can end with QED.